Welcome back on the mat. Let's start in a nice upright seated position. Make sure your chin is not dropped down and you're not lifting your chin up, but instead it's parallel to the floor. When you think of the spine, think of getting as much length as you can. And once you've got a nice straight spine, the ears should be in line with the shoulders. So what we want to avoid is dropping the head forwards, shoulders sort of, sort of collapsing down. So a nice way to think about a seated position is to pretend that you sit up against the wall. Close your eyes. Just start with a few nice deep inhales and exhales. So instead of having the breath natural, just instantly deepen. Notice how a few deep inhales and exhales almost force you into a bit of a different state. The aim is to maintain a consistent breathing pattern throughout the class. So keep that in mind. It's first the breath and then the movement. You can open your eyes. Step your feet nice and wide. Got the knees pointing up, hands supporting at the back, and simply just drop one knee down to the center towards the midline and switch. So just moving the hips around, we're getting a little bit of very mild external rotation, but the focus here is on turning the hips inwards or bringing the leg in for that medial rotation. Chest can be up. It's always good to focus on keeping length in the back, unless we do postures that require a bit of flexion in the spine. Bring it back to a neutral position. Now, very mild sort of pigeon stretch, really. Take the front leg, turn it to a 90, swing your opposite leg back. And in this shape, keeping front leg at 90, it might be difficult to bring the forearms down in front of the shin. In that case, you can stay on their hands. But if it's possible, twist with the torso, bring your forearms down, even if it's not entirely aligned. But see if, once you get the forearms down, if there's a way for you to draw navel to spine, arch in the back and get length in your spine. So in essence, we want to get into the left glute muscles and you want the spinal muscles to work and engage a little bit. So we definitely use our back muscles when we do our forward bending and so on. So it's a nice little mild way of stretching and warming up. Keep your breath deep. Sort of getting into the hips a little bit. Slowly come up onto your hands. Walk your hands a bit closer to the knee and then start to lift in the chest and walk your hands away from the front foot into a spinal twist. Walk it back to center. Now take your left elbow, reach towards the sole of the foot. If you don't get there, you'll place the elbow down on the mat. Alternatively, get your hands to prayer push into the hands and look over the top shoulder. So now you'll definitely feel that we're getting more into the hip by dipping the torso down and turning it into a little bit of a spinal twist. Even in this position, if the back tends to round, arch, aim to get a bit of length. Slowly make your way up, so you'll first release that sort of hand position, bring it down. Simply take your legs over to the opposite side. So in this case, you've got the opposite leg at 90. The back leg is slightly more casual, but you can flex the back foot. Bring your forearms down if it's possible. Alternatively, stay on the hands. Then start to arch in the back, lift in the chest, and feel how the glute stretch intensifies. You can even get a bit of an intensified sensation if you push the front leg down into the mat. So getting better activation by pushing down and that 
pushing down will allow you to work the chest up a bit more. Making your way up onto your hands, lift the chest, get length, and walk your hands away from the front foot into a spinal twist. I'm going to walk the hands towards the front foot. See if you can get the elbow to the instep of the foot. Hands to prayer. And twist. Once again, keeping length in your back as much as you can. It's not the end of the world if it starts to round a bit, but as long as you actively aim to keep it straight or keep length, you are on the right track. release and slowly make your way back up as you come up. Let's stay in a seated position, but straighten your left leg, bend the right foot, or the right leg at least. As you get into this casual position, reach with the right hand to the outside of the left foot. Your opposite hand can just be next to the body for support, but start to pull your foot towards your body and at the same time push with your foot away from your body. The minute you push the ball of the foot away and you pull with the arm, you'll get into the lat on the right side. So just pull, it's not a hamstring stretch. If you struggle to find the foot then grab hold of the ankle. In that case you'll just have to pull more with the arm. Slowly get out of this one, make your way back up and switch. You'll find that if you pull quite hard, it's quite a nice stretch for the lats on the right side. We do the opposite side. So hand comes down, start to pull, get that activation, push the ball of the foot away from your body so that you can stretch a little bit more. Slowly make your way up as you let go. Cross your legs. Get hands onto the mat, making your way onto all fours. In this all fours position, turn your fingers out to the sides. Tuck your toes, straighten your legs into a modified plank shape and shift a bit of weight from left to right. Normal down dog hands on the mat, fingers pointing forwards. So lift your hips into your first down dog, but we're not staying in a down dog. Step your feet behind the hands with the toes slightly out and squat down. So as you squat down into this position, the idea is to get the right shoulders far past the knee as well as the left arm, then start to walk your hands wide. Now as we do that, the triceps will push into the shins and in turn we get a bit of a stretch in the hips. Hold this position even if the heels can't stay on the mat. They'll then just be hovering which is perfectly fine. But as we now push the shins back, once again take your awareness or your focus to your spine, arch in your back, lengthen in the spine, lift in the chest. It's going to intensify this little warm-up position or posture. And now bring your hands back onto the mat, so normal down dog hands. Step it back into your down dog. 
So in this down dog position, you can simply just walk it out, bend one knee, and then the opposite side. Let's get into something that is comfortable. Feeling into the body. Assessing the way you feel today. Flexibility in the legs. Paying attention to your breathing pattern. And I'll raise your right leg. Exhale, step right foot between hands. As you get your foot in between hands, bring your back knee close to the mat, but not to touch. Lift chest, interlace fingers behind the back. Pull your arms away from your lower back. Exhale, release your hands onto the floor, straighten the back leg, step it back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale, get foot between hands, bend your back knee, lift chest, interlace fingers, roll shoulders back and down, pull your forearms away from your back. Just want to get the shoulder blades closer together. The shoulder blades sort of slide down and closer together. Exhale, release hands down, straighten back leg, step it back. Chaturanga, but we'll push back up to plank, so lie down. Inhale, back up. Exhale, down. Inhale, back up. Exhale, down. Inhale, back up. Lift your hips into down dog. Inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, position right foot in between hands. Bring your back knee down. Walk your right foot out to the side. Now the back foot can sort of rest on the floor, perhaps on an angle. Push your knee away from the midline. So we're opening up once again in the hip area. You're pushing out and the breath is deep. Bring it back to center, not the most intense stretch. Tuck toes, lock your back leg, step back. Lower down, Chaturanga. We're going to make our way back up into plank. So inhale, back up to plank. Exhale to Chaturanga. Just a bit of upper body work. Plank, exhale, down dog. Inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale, get foot in between hands. Bring your back knee down, walk the foot out to the side. Let's work the left knee away from the midline. And bring the knee back to center. You might want to step back into all fours if you don't have the uh, flexibility to place the hands onto the mat with the fingers pointing back. But if you can, get your hands into this shape. Top of the back foot stays on the floor. Lock your back leg. Get the left foot to join. And we get into a, quite a modified plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, push back up. Exhale, Chaturanga. Obviously, if this is too much, then you skip this part. Inhale, back up. Place your knees down. This is where we get a deeper stretch into the forearms, the flexors. 
Shifting a little bit of weight back. Don't collapse into the shoulders. Push away. Now turn your hands back. So we've got normal down and facing dog hands on the mat. Tucking toes, downward facing dog position. Bend your knees, look up. Inhale, step feet in between hands. Halfway lift. Maintain this halfway lift position. I'll explain what's happening next, but you focus on keeping length in your back and not simply just getting the hamstrings to stretch, but at the same time, by keeping length in your back, you get the back muscles to activate relatively well. Now the idea is gonna be to float the feet back. Hands will be sort of in front of the feet. If you get them in line with the feet, there's hyperextension in the wrists. Traditionally speaking, you can go with that option, but I don't know if it's worth it if you decide to make yoga a lifelong practice. So you'll place the hands sort of in front of the feet, but still shoulder distance. You lift onto the balls of the feet. So we transfer weight from having 100% of the weight on the feet, and we get more and more weight onto the hands as we lift heels, and we lift balls of the feet. From that shape, we will then feel the engagement in the core. As you keep length in your back, hopefully the lower back muscles stay active, and it's gonna allow the hips to lift higher and to sort of float the legs back. If you don't get the sensation it's a little bit of a jump or one foot lifts and then the other, it's okay. But as long as you implement what I'm saying, you try it as well as you can. You tuck in the elbows to get lat activation. Arms straight. Lift. Keep looking up. Get onto the tiptoes and then float your feet back. So you can try that. And as you make your way back, you can tuck your toes and sit back onto your heels. Now, the idea is to not stop breathing when you shoot the legs back. So we'll do it once again. Implement all the same little minor or subtle cues and then keep the breath nice and deep. Use the inhale to lift, exhale to take the legs back. It also gives you an idea that you can perhaps hover for a little bit longer. So let's step feet behind hands or sort of to the middle of the mat or Spread your fingers, push out of your hands, out of your shoulders, lift. The inhale should take the feet up and the exhale can shoot them back. So push, get onto the tiptoes, lift and take back. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, into a down dog. That's good, from the downward facing dog, tuck your elbows, place your forearms onto the mat to that dolphin-like shape. You simply hold this position. You don't have to walk your feet closer, but you push away from the mat. You might have to straighten one arm at a time, but if you have the ability to straighten both at the same time, you simply straighten, you make your way back into a down dog. Now bend knees, look up. Inhale, feet in between hands. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, arms to ceiling. Exhale, mountain pose. As you get in your mountain pose, roll the shoulders back and down. You'll focus on one spot very subtle little exercise or posture. Lift the heels off the mat. Feel that slight neutralization in the pelvis so you're not over tucking, but you're also not doing too much of an anterior tilt in the pelvis. The inner heels touching. Standing up nice and tall. always that very light lift from the base of the spine to keep the lower pelvic floor engaged. The nice way to assess whether there's a little bit of activation 
is by pushing into the abdomen with a finger above the pubic bone, below the navel. So that sort of stretch, feel if there's a light form of activation. If it's completely relaxed there, then you can perhaps lift a little bit more. Bring your heels down, inhale, take arms up. Exhale, forward bend, head to shins. In breath, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands and take it back into plank, but this time around, shift weight onto left hand. Step your right foot to inner thigh. Take your arm up. It's almost like a tree that's fallen over. Vashistas in a like shape. Exhale, bring your hand down. First, get back into a plank with the foot in that position. Knee out to the side. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, push back up. And then step your foot back. Shift weight onto the right hand. You can make use of your left hand to pull your leg up, getting the right position. Foot not on the knee. Lifting in the hips, pushing through the right shoulder. That subtle core engagement I was talking about, keep it there, keep it active. Exhale, bring your left hand down. Still that fallen sort of tree shape. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, back up. Step into a plank, lifting your hips into a downward facing dog pose. Now bring your knees onto the floor. I believe our first sort of child's pose like shape, but we take the hands out in front just to stretch into the shoulders. So puppy stretch. Maybe you even feel a bit of the stretch in the lats, the anterior deltoids as well. Your back and arch, knees and hips more or less aligned. Breath stays deep. Making your way back up. And now, as you sit back into a child's pose, let's get hands onto fists and raise the forehead onto the hand. We'll be playing with the idea of floating feet off the mat for a headstand. Maybe you just squeeze one knee into chest, lifting one leg or aiming to lift one leg. You can make your way back up. But the focus is once again to keep that subtle activation from the base of the spine. So you don't want to collapse down there. Grip hold of your triceps as you place the forearms onto the mat. Squeeze hands together. Don't go up into a full headstand. We're just playing with the activation directly linked to the lower core. So. Once you get a nice position, you can place the crown of the head down. The hands form a bit of a bucket or a cup and you grip hold onto the back of the head. Walk your feet closer. One option is to pull knee into chest. Should you go that option, that's perfectly fine. Then you simply lift one leg at a time. Alternatively, point with the toes, push. Feel that lower abdomen activating, lifting just a bit, placing the tops of the feet down. So feel that engagement, feel the hips pulling up and forwards, pushing elbows into the mat. That's where you get a bit of a float. Slowly bring it back down. Knees down, back into a child's pose. So I do this on purpose. I find that a lot of students don't really struggle with the idea of being in a headstand, but the way they go up into the headstand to finally be in the position can sometimes be a little bit choppy. So 
I'd rather focus on the correct activation, then I don't think anything would be troublesome at the top. Make your way and back up and this time round, depending on your quad flexibility, the flexibility or forgiveness in your knees, you can go back, maybe onto the forearms, maybe onto your back. I'll keep my hands on the floor and stay here. Eventually, you want all the vinyasa on the mat, any movement from one posture to the next, that jumping back, for instance, or jumping feet between hands, which is something I didn't demonstrate today on the mat, but any of these movements, lifting up into a headstand, you want it to be done with full control, with the breath leading the way, that's where we really make the yoga practice, let's say, united. We link one posture with the next. Slowly make your way back up. And as you come up, you can sit to the left side of the mat. Now, your right foot or leg will stay in the same shape. Just get the opposite foot up into that full lotus shape. Place your right hand on the, onto the outside of the left knee with the fingers pointing towards the body. Opposite hand goes around the back, nice deep inhale and exhale twist. Eventually you bind, maybe you would want to bind didn't even care to mention that. Bring it back to center, and then we'll switch. So binding would just be, you know, that one step further. Let's bend the left leg. You get the right leg on top. Lift the knee when you go for this full lotus shape. If you want to go for that bind, as I mentioned, you'll find the big toe, fingers under the knee, wrist pointing out, deep in out. Exhale, twist. If the bind's too much, let it go. Maybe hand is even just resting by the sacrum. It's really optional. The full posture is actually quite advanced. It's part of your intermediate Ashtanga series, really. So let's call it an intermediate posture. Bring it back to center, release. And do the legs, straighten, shake it out a little bit before we go for a Paschimottanasana of your choice. You can go with Paschimottanasana A, you can go with B, or you can interlace or find a wrist. So decide which one you want to go with and exhale. Maybe you feel like going for that final one to go a little bit deeper, seeing as though we're getting closer to the end of the practice and your body's still warm. So I'm taking an easy Paschimottanasana. You might want to arrest your head onto your shins. Perfectly fine. Inhale, lift in the chest. Exhale. Release, getting back to the hips. You'll bend your knees, get soles the feet together. Keep space between heels and the body. Get your arms underneath your legs, palms can face up. As you do this, you actively work your knees closer to the floor and instead of rounding in the spine, pull up with the arms to create a bit of traction, pulling your sternum closer to your feet. Inhale, 
slowly come up. You can lift your knees, find the outsides, well, the insides at least, of your feet. Maybe you want to step the feet in a little bit as we actively pull feet towards the body. So we're doing this external rotation in the legs, preparing the body for a posture like Janu Sushasana C, for instance. The third variation of head to knee pose in that seated position. Now release the feet. Squeeze your right knee into your chest, straight on the left leg. Lift the, well, the ball of the foot, grip hold to the outside of the right foot with the left hand, straighten your leg and take your opposite arm to the back. A little bit of a twist, a little bit of a hamstring stretch, push the ball of the foot into the hand. It's just going to intensify the stretch. Look to the front, bring your back arm to the front and slowly lower the leg down. Squeeze your left knee in. Nothing too serious, just a little bit of activation and so on. Lift the ball of the foot, grip hold to the outside with the right hand. Start to straighten, maybe you can't straighten the leg, that's fine. Reaching with the opposite arm to the back. Push the ball of the foot into your hand to stretch a bit more. Gaze back to center, bring the back arm to the front and bring it back down. And let's slowly relax down onto the mat. You can bring both knees into your chest. Just hug knees in. We are almost ready for our corpse pose. So you just move from side to side, feeling into the body and spine. Find the outsides of the feet and turn it into that happy baby shape, but still keeping a bit of movement in the body. Moving from side to side. And slowly let go of the feet, straighten your left leg, keep the right leg bent and take the right leg over to the, le to the left. And I'll bring it back to center, straighten right leg bend the left and take it over to the right. Slowly making your way back to center. Now for the first time in the practice, you can allow your breath to be absolutely natural. Positioning yourself into a comfortable corpse pose. Close your eyes. And I encourage you to stay here for as long as you want. And about 10 minutes would be great. If it's a bit shorter, that's fine. If it's longer, why not? <laughs> 